Hey there, I'm Angelo, and in this video, learn how to apply motion preset animation to a web banner ad using Adobe Animate. In this lesson, we'll explore how to create a motion tween animation, save it as a custom preset, as well as animate text in the project. Finally, I'll also go over how to add a hyperlink action to the button in the web ad. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. Okay, let's start by creating a new document for our web banner in Adobe Animate. I'm gonna click on the Create New button. And in the New Document window, in the Format Presets up above here, we wanna click Ads. And from the presets, we wanna choose Large Rectangle. You can see the width of that is 336, and the height is 280. The frame rate will leave at 30, and the platform type, ensure that that is set to HTML5 Canvas. Once you have these settings in place, go ahead and click Create. Now for this web ad, instead of designing it in Animate, I've already gone ahead and done all the design work in Illustrator. And so we're gonna import our Illustrator document into this Animate Canvas. But first, let me show you the Illustrator document. So here it is, here's the web ad that has some text, a button, the name of the fictional company, the shape that will animate, and you can see that I've placed them on separate layers. Background is the image, small rectangle, logo, button, text one, and text two. Let's jump back to Animate. To import that Illustrator file into Animate, go to File, Import, and then Import to Stage. Locate the Illustrator document. It's called web underscore ad.ai and it's provided to you in the download folder, which you can find a link to in the description below. Go ahead and click open. In the import to stage window here, let's just collapse all the layers. It'll make it easier to look at. So background, small rectangle, logo, button, text one and text two. Those are all the layers that I showed you in that Illustrator document. You want to make sure that select all layers is checked. And you also want to make sure that place objects at original position is also checked. And in the convert layers to drop down, you can leave that to animate layers. Once you have these selections in place, go ahead and click import. As a quick side note, I do prefer designing in Illustrator and then importing to stage much like I just showed you. However, you can design the ad in Animate. It's just based on personal preference. I want the duration in the timeline to be 10 seconds. I'm just going to scroll over to the 10 second frame mark in the timeline. Click the first frame, hold my shift key and click the last. I'm going to make my way up to the frame drop down and let's choose frame. You can also press F5 on your keyboard and that would do the same thing. It just creates frames to extend the timeline to 10 seconds. I'm gonna move the playhead back to the beginning and we're going to focus on small rectangle. I'm gonna zoom in on the canvas and this is what we're going to focus on. This small rectangle shape which we will animate and add a motion tween to. First, let's right click on the layer and choose Create Motion Tween. Drag the playhead to the one second frame mark, click on that frame and press F6 to add a keyframe. You can also do the same thing by selecting keyframe here. Okay. I'm gonna drag the playhead to the 45 frame mark and let's add another keyframe by pressing F6. While still on the 45 frame mark, Let's click on the free transform tool. And I want you to grab this white anchor point here and let's drag it to the bottom right hand corner of that shape. Click and while holding shift, drag the shape all the way to the upper left hand corner. So now we have this animation that starts at the one second frame mark and is complete at the 45 frame mark. Now check this out, if I go to the motion presets window here, and let me tear that off, you'll notice that I have the option to save it as a custom preset here. Now I've gone ahead and added a couple previously, but let me show you how to save this preset now. If I click the layer and choose 
save selection as preset, I can go in and name it large rectangle add to and click OK. And you can see that now that animation that we just created has been saved in the motion presets, custom presets folder. And just to ensure that it works, let's right click and choose remove motion tween. And now that I have this layer selected and I'm going to click large rectangle add to and click apply, you could see that that saved preset applies to the animation, that rectangle shape that we just created. Before we animate the text, I do want to add a blend mode to our shape. So let's click on it, go to the properties panel and under the object tab, you'll see that there's a blend collapse option. Go ahead and collapse that. And in the blend mode drop down, let's choose multiply. Okay, we can go ahead and animate the text now. So let me just move the motion presets window back to the dock. And let's scroll back to the beginning of the timeline and we want to focus on text one. In the meantime, I do want to hide text two. So the first text piece here is it's time to put more money in your pocket each month. Now, for whatever reason, when I carry this over from Illustrator, the letting seems to be off a little bit. So I do want to, I do want to fix that. I'm going to select all the text here and let's change that here in the line spacing. You could see it's 4.2. Let's move that to the left a bit. I find that minus seven works good and that looks a lot better. It's time to put more money in your pocket. Let's go ahead and animate this now. So I wanna move my playhead to the two second frame mark. Before I add a keyframe here, let's click on the text frame here, right click and let's go to convert to symbol. And let's just call this text one. This will allow us to add an alpha and change the opacity. So we have a fade in, fade out effect. So click okay. Now click that frame there and let's add a keyframe by pressing F6. Let's move our playhead to the 70 frame mark. Click that frame and add another keyframe by pressing F6. Let's move our playhead to the first frame in the sequence at the two second frame mark. Let's click object and in color effects, let's choose alpha. You can see by default, it's already set to 0% and that's fine. I'm going to drag the playhead to the 70 frame mark and let's click that. Let's go to object, color effects, alpha, and we want the alpha to be 100%. So you can see if I scrub through that, we don't have an effect yet. We just have a point A, which is 0% opacity and then 100%. So let's just right click that and create classic tween. And you can see that we have a nice smooth transition from point A to point B there. Let's move the playhead to the 130 frame mark. Click that frame and Press F6 to add another keyframe and let's drag the playhead to the 140 frame mark and press F6 again to add another keyframe. Now you can see nothing changes after that, that sequence here. So it fades in and it stays the same. We want that to stay, to stay the same, but I'm going to click this last keyframe and I want it to fade out. So you could set another opacity to it and change the opacity to zero or I can click that first frame, right click, copy frames, click that last one and paste frames. Next, click anywhere between these two keyframes. So 70 and 130, right click, create classic tween and do the same thing here. Right click, create classic tween. Now we should have a nice smooth transition if I play that I'll just press return on my keyboard and it fades in, holds, and then fades out. Good, now let me scroll back and let's focus on text two now. So now that the first text piece has been animated, I can turn that off and let's turn on text two. So the second text piece is switch and save up to 30% on home and auto insurance. I want this to play right after the first text piece fades out and that will be at about the 145 frame mark. So you can click there as a starting point. Let's also right click that 
and choose convert to symbol. And this will be text two. Go ahead and click OK. Now I can click on that frame at the 145 frame mark and press F6 to add a keyframe. Let's move the playhead to the 155 frame mark and do the same thing. That's F6. Let's move the playhead back to the first keyframe. Click on object in the properties panel and under color effects, we want alpha and let's choose 0%. So just slide that right back to 0%. Let's move the playhead to the second keyframe. Go ahead and click that. Go to object, color effects, alpha. And this time we want to increase that to 100%. So right click anywhere between those two frames and create classic tween. You can see that fades in nicely. All right, so let me just zoom in a little bit more here. And there's just one last step we have to do before we move on and add a button action to this get a quote button. And that's to remove the frames previous to the text animating. So for example, text two, I'm gonna click that first frame, hold my shift key and click the last one and just press delete. Now you can see that that text won't appear until the 145 frame mark. Let me turn on text one again and same thing. So I'm going to click on that very first frame because I don't want that text to appear until the two second mark. Hold shift, click that frame and press delete. You can see these are empty frames now. Okay. So no text, the animation, there's the first text and then the second will play. But let's have a look and see how it appears in a web browser. You can test the work by pressing this test movie button. It's the play button in the upper right hand corner of the workspace. Go ahead and click that. It'll process the, the project and the animation and then it'll launch in the web browser of your choice. So let me just drag it over here and you can see it's launched in my web browser and it's already played. So let me just refresh and you can see there's the animation, there's the first text piece that'll fade out, and there goes the second one. So I'm gonna close that, and I'll show you now how to add an action to this get a quote button. But before we do, we have to turn it into a button. So let's go to modify, or you could right click to do the same thing, convert to symbol. And in this case, the type, we want it to be a button. And let's call this quote button and press OK. Now that this is a button, we can add an action to it. But before we do that, we have to give this button an instance name. And you can do that in the object tab. You could see it's already a button. And under that, we have a field for the instance name. And let's just call this quote underscore BTN. Okay. Now click the button and go to window and then actions. From the actions window, let's click on add using wizard. And we want go to web page. You can see it has a little bit of code up here and by default, it defaults to adobe.com. You could change it to what you like. I'm gonna leave it at adobe.com, it's just fine. I'm gonna click next. And the triggering event, I want it to be set to on mouse click. And there is the quote underscore BTN instance name that we set. So I'm going to click that and choose finish and add. And you can see all the code that we just applied to through that action is set here. Once you've done that, go ahead and close the actions window and let's test it in the web browser. Now I'm going to click on the test movie and that will launch in a web browser and I'll just drag it onto the screen. I'll just drag the window on the screen here and you can see it's already playing, but let me hit refresh. There's the animation, the text pieces fade in and out, and I can also click get a quote button, and it takes me to the adobe.com website. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to apply custom motion preset animation using Adobe Animate. Leave a like or comment below if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. You can click the subscribe button and notification bell icon to stay up to date with all my latest content. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe Animate, check out this playlist right up here. And until next time, take care and keep creating.